So board down the bottom end. He's fifth seed in this one. So you would think. Okay, this must be wrong. What I have on here because this has not got the same guys in it uh, that you would expect in it. Uh, and my one, I've got board. Germany 20. Okay, I've got the wrong list here. Our seeding is wrong. I'm not sure where this has been updated from. But it does look like uh, Cordell in the lead if it's 220. Not sure what's going on with my ice score, but at the moment it's not right. So Germany, we've got Cordell. Is that uh, Can Julian Cantal maybe? <laughs> Mortifon is in third place and Dunkerbeck in fourth. So. Uh, Dunkerbeck, it looks like he's about to be overtaken. Yep. God, this is Someone on the Neil Pride just went flying past Dunkerbeck. Underneath him as well. Whoa, that's a big gust that they're in now. Sorry about this. The, the, the eye score which I have for this heat is not correct. So here we go. Kentel. Yeah, we go. Cordell. Mortifon. Okay, so there's some big names missing out of this at the moment. But it isn't as stacked as we first thought. It does change things. So it is different. So uh, it's Julian Kentel round in first. Cordell in second. Third place is Mortifon. Then we have in fourth place... On the pride is Arnon Dagan, yep. So Arnon Dagan in the fourth, an important spot. And Bjorn Dunkerbeck at the oh, moment fifth. is out of it. But that looks very light at that mark. They're oh. not really trying to pump out of it. That looks, I mean, it looks windy enough. But Dunkerbeck is going to be moaning. Oh. I just have it. I can hear him from here. <laughs> he is just, you could see. But not these boys happy. are just pulling away. So Julian can tell at the front of the three at the moment, Bjorn Dunkerbeck missing out. So Julian can tell ran in first. Then Cordell. Round in second place. Third place, Pierre Mortifon. Then we've got uh, Arnon Dagan. And behind him, Bjorn Dunkerbeck. So Bjorn Dunkerbeck is out in the first round if he can't close in on Arnon Dagan. We need to go back to that mark because that is where the battle is between Bjorn Dunkerbeck and Arnon Dagan. And Arnon Dagan is not slow. Who else have we got? We've got Sakin in there. We've got Recky. His worst silt result ever, if the last couple of rounds are anything to go by. He is not looking super comfortable out there. It's still not over yet. We've got Julian Cantel in first place. Cordell in second. Third place, Pierre Mortifon. Then we have Arnold Dagan. A good jive from him. A, we'll put him in the next yeah, round. He's got a big, big lead in front of um, Dunkerbeck there as well. i tell you what, Dunkerbeck isn't going to catch him. I wouldn't have thought, but we'll stay with Bjorn Dunkerbeck. You never know. It was a good jive from Dunks. That was probably the best job we see him do. Let's follow Bjorn Dunkerbeck down this reach. Oh, I tell you what, he's not going to catch on and catch him at all, is he? Ah, but it's Julian Cantel that, uh, I mean, he has won a lot of rounds. Yeah. He's, uh, especially free yesterday, he just won this one. Then Cordell in second place, good result for him. Then we have uh, Pierre Mortevant and then Arnon Dagan taking that fourth spot. So Biggest upset so far, second elimination, Ooh. first round, Bjorn Dunkerbeck not having it his own way. He didn't look like he... he th I think he thought it could be cancelled after that second second mark. It's so different. We were talking about this the other day, because, um, or in fact yesterday, because uh, Ross... Okay, so let's see how this one pans out. We've obviously got Taddy Franz, one of the smallest guys. You know, one of the smaller guys of the fleet. He's not the smallest, definitely not. I don't think uh, Ethan Westerra is that big. No, either. I was going to say he's pretty small. That's why I said he wasn't the smallest. I was about to say he's the smallest. And then we've got uh, Gunnar Asmussen, who's probably one of the bigger guys of the fleet. So sort of uh, the David Goliath thing there. We got uh, Volta Russia. Big. Volwater Marotti is massive for a young lad. He's a he's a he's a strapping lad. Uh, so expect to see some good skills there from Marotti in this one. I reckon he's got some speed. Your Mazer. Let's get. A, let's try to see if we can get an idea of where these boys are standing. We're trying to. Hopefully, we'll get over the radio. Somebody calling this first mark round because sometimes when they are on the same sails, it is kind of difficult to uh, see who's doing the best. Volwater's just gone down that pin end. There he is. Tati fans starting super high. What, I think Volwater's ping this. Oh, no. Oh, Volwater's miles over the line. Gunner. Oh, Aruba Gunner. 4. Aruba 4. He knows it. I think he's on the loft. Ah, uh, yeah. Oh, because he's so high up. 
It's difficult to see from this angle, eh? Very difficult to see. We saw Peter Volwar go down the pin end. He probably knew he was early and used that little bit more distance to go yeah. to the pin end to sort of run off a bit of speed. Um, it's almost like um, practice practice run for the guys that didn't go over early, isn't it? Like, oh, yeah. OK. Oh, yeah, that's, <laughs> one. Oh, that's one missing. Right, done. <laughs> Do you get it um, with racing? Do people get pushed over the line by other people? For sure, yeah. I mean, when one person goes, you almost got to go with them. I mean, if you don't go with them, you get enrolled on the first run and then you're pretty much not going to be in there anyway. Uh, it's a problem because you, you're always trying to stay and if you know you're early, you don't want to go. But you don't want to bear off too get, much to yeah, go for the pin. You kind of get pushed. So it depends on the, how the line is set up. Okay, well, we're waiting for the, the sequence at the moment. This is the general recall flag at the moment. Let's say, if you want to get on Twitter, you want to get a shout out. Let's get some fresh air in here. We got uh, not, cannot, <laughs> canoot, canoot. canoot. <laughs> Can watch and hear live stream now after switching from Linksys to Windows, unlike live stream from Clipmuller, no probs on Linksys. Can Linux, Linux. Linux, Linux, Linux. It's just different operating systems. I, I don't know anything about Linux, 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 Linux. Anyway, I don't know anything about it. But it's fine, if he, he switched to Windows, so it's all good. I'm pretty sure everyone on Mac is all working as well. Uh, we got Jeff Top saying, Ben, I see a lot of traffic in the foreground. Who are those guys who sail while the race is still on? Um, well, it's pretty quick, you know. It's like out there. Is it? Yeah, that's freestyle, sir. But it's pretty quick, isn't it? it? As in the sequence for the next race. They're just guys already tuning gets up for the next race, yeah. Yeah, well, it already gets started whilst the, the current race is on, doesn't it? So they have to be out there. Yeah, yeah. No, these are guys, basically the guys in the foreground are the guys tuning up, getting ready for the next race or the next start. Because obviously when the guys are racing, they're already tuning up to get to their next start, which could be the next start because it's offshore winds. They're pretty much, we're looking straight through the course. So it's pretty hard for them not to be where they are. So that's, it's just basically sailors. Where did Jordi Vonk come from? A guy to watch for the future for sure Mario for sure well he started windsurfing in 2005 that's and now, pretty he's, impressive. now he's on the peel away in eight years that's pretty good I, I mean, mean how old is he wait, wait, wait. let's just put it into perspective how old is he 20 19, 20 I don't okay. know 19, 20 when do you think Jimmy Diaz did his first PWA race I don't know <laughs> if I'm honest with you I don't know Either way, though, I reckon people like Jimmy Diaz have probably been racing on the PWA Tour for longer than Geordie Bonk's been alive. Would you not say? Yes. 20 years? Yes. Yes. I don't know. I'm just looking through my, my piece of paper here. I've got a lot of them. We've got, I've got all my young guys that I thought might be worth talking about in here, all sort of 22 and under. And there's quite a lot. A few Danes in here, quite young guys. I didn't realise. I need to read out a bit of them. But one of the old guys, 53, he's Rackner. Jordi Vonk, 20, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, so definitely Jimmy must have been c competing for 20 years. You would think so. So that's pretty amazing, then, isn't it? Pretty impressive, yeah. <laughs> very impressive. So there we go. We'll definitely want to watch now, not for the future. I think just now. Let's watch him now. Uh, but I think that's what I say. Before they really come onto this scene, you see spots of brilliance so you'll see them in a final then yeah. the next time you might see them get knocked out. and then you'll see and it takes a while before they get that consistency so we do have a few freestylers out there full hacking around Four, three, two, one, Ooh. Ooh. oh well, surely with a good h24 first across the line looked like a hell of a start yeah. um, who have we got in this heat i hear you're asking well Tati france. look at the elimination we can see Tati france in there we can see uh asmussen, asmussen on the north we can see peter volwards we can see russia and we can see marotti on the other point seven sale uh who else have we got we've got yil mazer as well prien 
as well. He's on the north, I think. He's quite far back at the moment. And Vestra is obviously already out. So round him first. Who's it going to be? Peter Ball. Oh, Tati's no, gone Tati for the gap. on the inside. Ah! He had to really squeeze it round. So even though he was first round, it didn't really go his way. And oh. he's got nailed. He's, oh, he's, something went wrong there. I think that might be Marotti. It's either Marotti or uh, Russia. Oh, that must have been so much turbulent wind from the, all the other sailors then. He couldn't keep hold of it. So it could be Malta Russia out in front. I'm guessing it's Malta Russia. I don't know if we can get some confirmation of that. Uh, I don't want to comment the whole race if it's not. Can I just get confirmation that's Russia out in the lead? Yeah, that's Croatia for a while. Ah, OK. It's uh, not. It's, it's Marotti. So it is Marotti. So Marotti out in the lead. Second place. Uh, well, last time we looked, Peter Volwater. Then we had... Uh, Gunnar Asmussen, and then I think we've got Yilmaza, then we've got Tati Franz, uh, and then we've got Priem. Uh, so there we go. I told you he was quick, and then Russia behind him. So that's what I'm talking about, the Croatian. He's a big lad. He's only young, but he's got some serious speed, and he is definitely one name I reckon you need to watch out for in the future as well. He is built like a brick house. Uh, so there you go. Marotti rounding first, second place Peter Volwater, third place Gunnar Asmussen, uh, and then fourth place I think oh, it's Jill Mazer. And Tati then Tati Franz, I tell now. you, here he comes, the angry little wasp as we called him in Aruba. He was just buzzing around like zzz, zzz, and he just never goes away. You can't get rid of him, and he looked so much smaller. But the other guys don't look as such bigger sales today. He's obviously smaller. Look at the speed of Tati Ooh. Franz underneath Jill Mazer, I think there. So Tati Franz is up into the top four. Great he was racing. looking out of it now. So there you go. That's what Tati Franz has to offer. He's not only little. He doesn't only do good jibes. He's got some serious board speed. So uh, it's the Croatian, the young Croatian running first. Marotti, second place. Peter Bolwater, then Gunnar Asmussen. Then Tati Franz needs a good jibe here and gets a good jibe. And he's going to sell straight past Peter Bolwater maybe. I think he's got a bit of a run on him. So, Yilmaza, we need to just follow that fight there for fourth place. We've got uh, Marotti out in the front. Yes. Tati Franz up into third place. Uh, in second place, it's obviously Gunnar Asmussen. Uh, and at the moment, Pete Volwater hanging on to fourth place. He's getting charged down by Yilmaza. Uh, but Ennis, I don't think he's going to catch him. It's going to be Peter Volwater taking that fourth spot. But it's Marotti. The Croatian qualifying for the quarterfinals in first place. Second place, Gunnar Asmussen. Then Tati Franz, Peter Volwater, and Yul Mazer missing out in fifth Ooh. place. So good racing from Tati Franz. That'll give him a bit of confidence, I think, when you catch back up like that. Yeah. It shows you've, uh, you've still got the board speed. He's probably a bit disappointed after that final uh, the elimination one. He was looking so strong yesterday and then finished eighth in the first final today. So... Uh, Maybe that's, uh, that's helped him a little bit. We've got one more heat left in this first uh, set of heats. The first heats are the, in the bleh, elimination two. The Cyril Musulmani, we've got Kusin, we've got Farin, we've got Beal, we've got Kiani, Lagun, and Drachna. So uh, that's going to be interesting. This is not an easy one either. So Kuros Kiani, I saw on his Twitter page, he wanted to make every first round and a couple of quarterfinals get through them which would mean he was in the top 16 a few times and he'd made every first round he didn't get the first round yesterday he had actually quite a solid draw uh, so it's going to be solid interesting draw, to too see. big a sale was a thing i'm not sure but is the win the same or is it slightly more than yesterday i don't know maybe the gusts are a little bit more it's, it seemed to have tempted some of the freestylers out i mean maybe that's just from pure sort of boredom of watching People yeah, win to everyone to get out there, but if you can play, if it's they're out there flying around the freestylers, so it must be windy enough. Obviously, plenty of breeze, but it's quite flat, so the boys can hold on to bigger sails. We've well, got about 30 seconds before the start, so Cyril Musumani, Kusin, Farin, Beal, Kiani, The Gun, and Drachna. Drachna, 53 years old. The He's the oldest spread. man in the competition in Germany. 3333. Three, three, three. Wolfgang is his name. How's he going to get on? He's going to be on the gun German sale, name, I think. That, there we go. Kiani going down the end. He's early. Oh, oh. surely that was over early. <laughs> I hate to say it. <laughs> that was pretty. You even see it. Sort of... Oh. He might have got away with that. No, did he? 
they were both down the pin end. So the gun is over the line in the first round again. I think it's the gun, isn't it? The gun, 13? 86, France 86 and D13, yeah. So uh, <laughs> the gun, the second elimination in a row, he's over the line early. They looked early. You could see Kuros coming down. tried to stop. He was like, oh, oh hit the brakes, hit the brakes. Oh, God. So it's not a good event so far for Kuros. Kiani, oh, another first round exit. And the gun is out as well. But that makes it uh, a lot easier for the other boys. So Biel Farin, Kasim Cyril Musumani, uh, and Drashna. So Drashna, 53 years old. Can he make this first round? There's only one person going to miss out. You would have to say he would be the lowest seed out of this, so he's got his yeah. work cut out, but let's not write him off. No. I mean, he, maybe he's got 30 or more years of experience on the other guys, being 53 years old. To, yeah, <laughs> there is that. There definitely is that. Well, uh, we'll, with a name like Wolfgang, you've got to win. You've got to win. Some ideas, some ideas, some ideas. <laughs> I'm not sure why I'm singing that. It's like Wolfgang Amadeus. Not Mozart. sure. That's right. <laughs> so there's a lot of sport for Jordi. Jordi Vonk. Jordi is 20. I know. <laughs> I know that. I'm just having a look. Sorry, just going through a few messages, trying to catch up on what I've been missing out on on Twitter. What have we got, Ben? Have you asked Philip Costa when you interviewed him if he's planning to join the slalom fleet? Would be awesome. He is planning to do it. Um, just not yet, not yet. Give him a bit of time. I think he will definitely be doing a bit of slalom. That's for he's sure. He's going to be scary on the slalom course, I think, isn't he? He's quite keen. Yeah. Yeah. He's quite keen <laughs> to do it, but I think he doesn't want to do it unless he's got a chance. So uh, we've got uh, Edson saying good luck to Josh Angulo. Let's see a bit of support out there for Josh. A lot of support for everyone, really. So that's how we're rolling at the moment. Like I said, if you are looking online, I know it's a little bit stop-start at the moment. Just seeing one of the freestylers just pull off a nice uh, culo. Did you see what sale he was on? Gastro, orange and blue. Oh, down there. Over by the, by the thing. Uh, is that? Uh, it could be a number. It could be Tonky Fans. It could be David Sheffers. He crashed. Probably neither of those two then. <laughs> <laughs> I actually only saw the end of it, so it could have been anything, but it looked like a culo. I'm going to have to brush up on my freestyle uh, knowledge. Of the there he is, he's on screen. No, not him, up. it wasn't him. Oh, it was someone else. Apologize. It was someone near the boat on the way out. So there is a fair bit of wind out there. I imagine those guys aren't on anything bigger than 5.3, 5.0. <laughs> they don't seem to use anything bigger than 5.0 <laughs> when I've seen the freestyles. 4.8, 4.8, four four is most preferred size. Are we going back into the same heat? Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> That's what I like to know. I don't want to get shouted at again on the live. They tell me off when I get it wrong. But like, they never really... Oh, I should really find out, I suppose. I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> okay, come on, give us your questions. Uh, what's going on in the world of slalom? What do you want to see? Who do you want to see go through? Do you want to see... Is it Drashner? Drashner? Wolfgang, Wolfgang Drashner. They call him Wooly. This is his nickname. Let's give him some shout out. He's 88 years old. No, he's not. He's 88 kilos. He's 184. From Germany. Residence in Cologne. Debut on the tour 2009. So he's a bit of a late starter, really. Hang on a minute. He's Best result. Slalom world champion? No. Oh, yeah. Maybe Grandmaster. Silt. So he did the uh, Slalom Worlds. Uh, in 2013, which is the same as uh, the Iwa, the uh, if Ifka, Ifka mm. Slalom Worlds, and he won the Grand Masters. So he's world champion. He's world champion. He's, uh, there we go. National ranking sixth. Got a few sponsors in there. Techno Sport, Starboard, Gun Sales. He likes a lot of sizes of sales. He has got a lot of sizes of sales. And he he's, likes uh, them. Home Spot, Favourite. North Sea Channel, Windsurfing Idol, Antoine, Friendly Hero, he says. Uh, Off-season training? No, doesn't do that. <laughs> and he got here a day before, and he's been here ten plus times. Here we go. They're not the guys, just not on the line. They don't even need to be on the line. I think they know there's only five of the minute, but we can only see four at the moment. So where is Drashner? Drashner. Oh, there he is. Well, not the best start from Drashner. 
get a bit of a bit of a work to do. Uh, I think these boys are just going to cruise this, so I can't. You're not going to expect anything, but you know some things can happen. You never know. I mean, a bit of breakage, a bit of a bad jive, and I tell you what, Drashner's catching up a little bit. He's yeah. actually having a pretty solid first run. If he'd been on this start line, he'd be right in this. Go on then, Bubble. She's gonna have a warm-up heat. Call me round. Have a warm-up heat. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I'm just. <laughs> I'm just wondering why everybody went so wide on that time. Because they don't need to. There's only four a minute. Only five in this. Are you keeping up here? I'm trying. We've got Cyril Musulmani, obviously. He's leading it. Then yeah. we've got probably... Peter Beale. Peter Beale. Then we've got Cussin. Ah, that's Cussin. And then we've got Farin in okay. fourth. And then Drashner is in fifth place. So these boys, pretty easy run of it, really. Um, Drashner probably could have give a bit of a challenge but he wasn't really there, he on, wasn't the there on the start yeah. so uh, he probably wasn't they wasn't too scared because these guys do the full tour obviously uh, but you know anything can happen if they crash you know he's still there one mistake from those boys he is in there 53 years old debuted on the tour four years ago so uh, kicked off his tour when he was 49 so it's good <laughs> to see old Wolfgang come on son we want to see Wolfgang get through to next round it would be kind of Kind of good to see. So these guys, you know, Farin is sitting in fourth place at the moment. Any mistake from him, and I reckon I was say, he's not actually, Drashner might be may, coming past. Maybe Farin's taking it a little bit too easy. Well, we'll have to wait and see. So Cyril Musulmani round in first, then Peter Beale third place is Kusin, and here's Farin. Can't afford to mess this up. Nice jibe from yeah. Farin. There we go. Good jibe. Here's Drashner. Wolfgang. Amadeus Mozart. Ooh. No, that's all right. It was still there. Not the, not the, not the sleekest of jibes. Of it, no. And Farin has sort of pulled away on that jibe mark, so maybe he did sort of have a quick look over his shoulder. But like I said, one crash, that sail goes in the water, and uh, you won't be going in the next round. But Cyril Musulmani cruising to a pretty easy victory here. Peter Beale as well, second place. And we've got Kusin. And we've got Furin. And Drashner should be coming to shot any second now. So he just needs a nice clean job. Good job from Farin. So these boys will be in the next round. They're looking to make... Well, they've made that look Pete, pretty Pete's easy. Peter Bill's managed to get ahead of Cyril Musulmani as well. I think he's just cruising. Doesn't yeah, want any mistakes. Doesn't yeah. want to tempt fate by trying to drag race Peter Beale to the end. He just needs to get in the next round. It doesn't matter where they finish. There's no seed in. They just Those four guys make it into the next round. So next up, we're going to have the men's semi-finals for elim uh, sorry quarterfinals for elimination two. Kentel, Cordell, uh, Mortifon, Dagan, Albo, Bauman, Board, and Maynard. <coughs> but when you start getting towards these quarterfinals, you realise how tricky it is. minute quarter final number one heat number nine Kentel Cordell Mortifon Dagan Albo Bauman Board Maynard nobody can afford to take it easy Albo all eyes will be on him this is where it's all going to come down to it if Albo doesn't make it through this round maybe the door is left a tiny bit open I say a tiny bit it would be a tiny bit because Menengati didn't obviously really get a great first elimination draw. He ended up finishing in seventh place. So he's still got a bit of work to do. But he also still needs Albo to mess up. Uh, like I say, the fight for second and third is still on between Kentel and Menengati. So again, we need to watch that. Kentel is in this. He is in that fight. He can't afford to mess up at the moment. Okay, we're going to leave. Bubbles leaving us now, so thanks a lot uh, for Andy Bubble Chambers. That's a bit of a hand up. Okay, it's a good start. KV11. So it sounds like Maynard with the best start. Let's try and keep an eye on. Let's try and keep an eye on who are these. We need to, someone to call them. Uh, Cordell, obviously on one of the Gastras. Board on one of the Gastras. Okay, so who is up there? We know Arnon Degan might be up there. We've got uh, Finney and Maynard up there. We've got Antoine Albo down the bottom end. Uh, like I said, we've got the two Gastras, Bord and Cordell. Uh, Pierre Mortifon is missing out at the moment, as is, I think, 
maybe the poodle. Uh, it's either one of them. We need to get someone to call around. Someone's gone in the water. Can someone give me some mark roundings or just positions, please? Okay, so it looks like... Well, it looks like uh, Finney Maynard's dropped a third. He's the one I can definitely tell. And it looks like someone else is dropping back. So is that the... I think it's Antoine Albo obviously out in the lead. Um, maybe Cordell. Could someone give me some mark roundings, please? Okay. Obviously, we're not going to get any, but it's... So Cordell in second, then Finney and Maynard, and then Julian... Okay, Julian Cantel has caught right up uh, into that fourth spot, so that is going to be uh, the battle for fourth, and Julian Cantel, like I said, wasn't looking good at that first mark, but he is right back in it now. Uh, Antoine Albo, though I said, is leading this, and Cordell sailing good again, so we've mentioned his name a few times this uh, this week, so the German rider Cordell, Sebastian Cordell, looking really good in second place. So uh, Antoine Elbeau ran in first, Cordell in second, then Finian Maynard in third, and then there's a fight between Julian Cantal and Pierre Mortefont. And here comes uh, Cedric Borden, and he's going to be added into the mix because those guys parked up a little bit at that boy. But Julian Cantal getting quickly away and maybe closing in on Finian Maynard. So it's going to come down to the last jibe mark and it does look like Julian Cantel is going to roll over Finian Maynard and this could cause him some problems. He's got uh, Pierre Mortefont behind him, quite a long way behind at the moment, but uh, it will make a difference. A couple of metres could make the difference between making that uh, gust and not and that can be the difference between whether you overtake. But uh, Sebastian Cordell going well. So uh, Antoine Albo making a nice one of this and he didn't get a good jibe there. Cordell got away quite cleanly in third place, Julian Cantel, and here's Finian Maynard, and it's not a great jibe from Finian, struggling to get going, he's got Pierre Mortefont trying to go underneath him, but Finian Maynard just blocking out the wind, and pretty much the sun with that sail, it's massive, so Finian Maynard, nice inside jibe, and just didn't give the guys anything to go on, they had to go underneath him, and it found it very difficult to get the breeze. So it looks like to be Finian Maynard will take that all-important four spot, but he's been charged down by Cedric Board. It's Antoine Albo that crossed in first, Sebastian Cordell in second place. In third place, it is uh, Julian Cantal. Not an easy race for Julian, but he's made it through. And then we have Finian Maynard, and he really didn't have it all his own way. Pierre Mortevon slipping to sixth place, and Cedric Board getting fifth. OK, there we go. That was the top four. Getting through the next round, like I said, Sebastian Korn and Cordell going well. Uh, a couple of Sebastians going well. Sebastian Cornum as well in this one. So we've got Menengati, Ben van der Steen, Toselli, Algrez, Angulo, Castell, Costa Hovel and uh, Cornum in this. So let's hope we can get some, uh, some readings. Let's hope we can. I'm just trying to... Five, four, three, two, one. OK, coming to the start. France 916. So it sounds like Toselli with the best start. So he's on one of the point seven sales. Obviously, someone else on one of the 0.7 cells is uh, Men and Gatti. So both of the 0.7s looking good. Uh, Costa Hovel may be looking good as well. Uh, and who's this coming through? Is this Tristan Algres? Is it uh, Castell? It's a few of them that's going very fast. So it looks like Costa Hovel. So yeah, we've got the 2.7 cells. Men and Gatti, Tosselli, Costa Hovel in third. Uh, then we've got Josh Angulo on the gun cell. But I think. Is that Castell or Algrez? I can't quite see uh, on the other loft sail. Could be Castell. Hopefully we can get a call at this mark rounding. Just give me a mark rounding for the loft sails. I can't quite see them. So I'm trying to just get a, a quick cover, but it's 2.7 sails. So Tosselli and Menegatti, obviously Menegatti, Tosselli up at the front.
So it's Castell ahead of Gonzalo Costa Hovel on the loft sales. Then we've got uh, the gun sale of Josh Angulo. Yeah, that's right. Oh, and here comes the Gastra of Ben Vandersteen. So Ben Vandersteen really catching up now, and he has done an amazing jibe. Skills from the Flying Dutchman. He has caught right back into this. Can we get a few? There we go. So uh, one of the loft sales has really missed out. I think it's Costa Hovel. Uh, and it's Castell up in uh, in the lead. I'm thinking it's Costa Hovel. God, this is very hard to see these guys. So we've got the 2.7 riders, Menegatti and Toselli out in the lead. And then I think we got uh, Castell. Then we got Ben Van der Seen, Josh Angulo. Then we've got Costa Hovel. Then we've got Al Grez. And both of those guys getting caught up in each other. Each other. Okay, well, it's very close. That fourth position is going to be tightly fought. Ben van der Steen dropping back a little bit. He is in fourth place at the moment. Josh Angulo is uh, sort of increased in third place. I think Castell in second. Uh, no, sorry, Josh Angulo's in that fourth place because we've got the 2.7 sailors out in front, Toselli and Menengatti. Uh, then we've got Castell. Then we've got Josh Angulo. So at the moment, Ben van der Steen missing out. I think we've got Tristan Algrez missing out. We've got Gonzalo Costa Hovel missing out. And we've got Sebastian Corner missing out. But I tell you what, Ben van der Steen has just caught up Josh Angulo. So this is all to play for. They're going to come down to this final drag race to the finish. Can Ben van der Steen overtake Josh Angulo? I'm not sure. He's going to have to go underneath Josh, and Josh is going to play every trick in the book to hold him off. But Ben van der Steen got plenty of speed. Look at Ben van der Steen go. He is claiming on Josh Angulo the whole way down this reach. He's got to go underneath him now. Ben van der Steen, Josh Angulo, I tell you what, Ben van der Steen looks like he's got it, but it's close. That is the fight. We've got the 2.7 guys, Mengati Tosselli. Then we've got Kestel. Then a fight between Ben van der Steen and Josh Angulo. Ben van der Steen gained all the way down that reach, but I'm not sure who got it. I couldn't quite hear that. Who got that out of Ben van der Steen? Just wait. Okay, we're not going to find out. We're going to have to wait until... Uh, just trying to... We're just having a look at that rerun. Here is Ben van der Steen. Yeah, it was CV1. CV1, I think they got about 30 seconds left. OK, so CV1, it was Josh Angulo that made it. So Ben van der Steen is out. Josh Angulo, just on the angle of the line, will have got that. I think Ben van der Steen knew it. So there you go, close racing. But Ben van der Steen out at the quarterfinal stage. That makes a huge difference. It's not going to help his overall position at the moment. So we go to heat number 11. We're right in there. Silvan Musulmani, Buzainis, Allen, Malena, Yakino, Diaz, Vonk, Guadagnino. Italy 140 with the best start. So Yakino with the best start down that pin end on the white challenger sale. We've got... Uh, who else have we got in this? I'm just looking down the list. We've got Buzainis, obviously, on the Maui sales. We've got the point sale, point seven sale of Guadagnino. Uh, we've also got Allen in this on the Severn. All those guys right in that top four at the moment. Jordi Vonk missing out. Um, but uh, it's still early days yet. Here we go, round the first mark. Yakino rounding first. Then Buzainis. Then on the inside, I think it's Silvan Musulmani. Oh, and I'm going underneath them all. I think that was Steve Allen. So Steve Allen getting away from that mark with plenty of speed. That's the north sale of Jimmy Diaz as well, so causing all sorts of problems, that first jibe mark. This is super close racing. This is going to come down. Nothing is given at the moment. Uh, Tom Molina catching up at the back, just overtaking uh, Dione Guadagnino. But it's, I tell you what, Yakino is looking super quick at the moment. He was looking good yesterday as well. Flying out the front on the white challenger sale. So Yakino, the young Italian, right out in the lead. Second place, Steve Allen. Closely followed, and I say closely followed, right behind him, Micah Buzainis. And then we've got Jimmy Diaz and Silvan Musulmani. Jordi Vonk at the moment is missing out. He's going to need to get a, a bit of uh, some speed on. Not, I mean, not the worst drive, but not the best drive. He needed something good if he was going to catch uh, up with those boys just ahead of him. He has got a little bit of work to do. 
because they've got to catch Jimmy Diaz. He's the fourth place rider. So that white sail, fourth place on your screen now, you can see that is the, is the benchmark. If you don't get past that rider, you're not going in the next round. But Yakino, he is looking pretty comfortably in the next round at the moment, winning this heat by quite a nice margin. Second place, Steve Allen. Third place, Micah Buzainis. Fourth place, Jimmy Diaz. But here comes Sylvain Musumani, really challenging Jimmy Diaz. He got a nice uh, run on him then, but he went underneath him and he's lost the wind. And Jordi Vonk is going to overtake Sylvain Musumani. So Jordi Vonk up into fifth place. This is going to come right down to the wire, but Jimmy Diaz does have... Maybe a little bit too much ground for Jordi Vonk. Let's have a look. We've still got a bit of line to go. We've got another giant mark and half a reach, but it's Giacchino will be in the next round, barring a disaster. He's round the outside marking first. In second place, it's Steve Allen. Then we've got Micah Buzainis, but there doesn't look a lot of wind at this mark. We saw Steve Allen off the plane there. Here we go. How's the jibe from Jimmy Diaz? I'll tell you what, Sylvain Musumani back in this, but he had to go tight and he couldn't get out the jibe quickly and he's given Jimmy Diaz a little bit of a run on those guys. So Jimmy Diaz, I think, will get this fourth place. Jordi Vonk won't be going uh, into the semi-finals or finals this time. It's going to be those top four riders, Yakino, Steve Allen, Mike Buzainis and Jimmy Diaz. So Yakino already going over the line in first place. <coughs> Second place, Steve Allen. Third place, Micah Buzainis. And then fourth place, El Presidente, Jimmy Diaz. Good racing. It was Jordi Vonk actually overtook Sylvain Musulmani on that last reach. So he managed a fifth, but it's uh, fifth ain't good enough. That's the problem. Just refresh my screen. Get this elimination up to date. Okay, who have we got in this? I'll tell you who we've got. We've got Marotti. He was looking really good in the last round. We've got Asmussen. We've got Volwater. We've got Franz. We've got Beal. We've got Cyril Musulmani. We've got Kusin. And we've got Farin. My, my reckoning, that's kind of good for me at the commentary booth because all those sailors have pretty much different sails. Um, in fact, they've all got different sails, which makes it very easy. So this one, we should be all up and running. We are actually quite far away from the beach. Obviously, offshore winds, not as easy to see uh, individual logos of the sails. But not long to start. Marotti, can he get into that semi-finals? He won his opening round. So let's just see. He's obviously got the speed. He just needs to get the start. The guys lining up. Coming up to the start, Gunnar Asmussen has been looking quick as well, so let's see how he goes in this. Looks like a good start coming up. Oh, spoke too soon. General recall. Who is it going to be? NED0, Peter Beal, as usual, he's always uh, pushing the start. Mr. Peter Beale, so yeah, over early for Pete, not a good start for him. Oh, so much too good a start for him, shall we say. Okay, so there we go. So having a quick check what's going on online. Okay, just having a look. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wolfgang, Wolfgang, show him how it's done. Oh yeah. Shame he didn't. It would have been good to see our Wolfgang up there. But uh, we've already lost one from this last of the quarterfinals. We just lost Peter Beal. So we'll be getting straight back in it. What else is going on? What else? Let's have a look. Uh, we got uh, Pedro telling me what the loft sails are. Yeah, the problem is I can see two loft sails. I can see Castell, I can see Gons, but it's difficult to tell them apart. That's that's the problem. So if we just if they just had somebody calling on the first reach with a set of binoculars, then it's all good for the rest of the heat. So. 
hopefully one day someone will do it for me. <laughs> God knows I've asked. Just that first reach, if you can tell who is who just on the first reach, then it's all good for the rest of the race. Okay, so there we go. That is what we've got up. You know who's in the next round. Marotti, Asmus and Volwater, Franz, Cyril Musulmani, Kusin and Furin. Uh, so we've got Marotti, he'll be on the black 0.7 cell. Asmus will be on the white north. We've got Volwater on the sort of see-through uh, Avanti. Going to have Franz on the yellow and sort of pink Maui sails. We've got Cyril Musulmani on the red Severn. We're going to have Kusin on the loft and Furin on the white Challenger. So there we go. This is how heats all should be. Everyone on different colour sails. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> and then we'll be going in, obviously, to the semi-finals after this. We've already had one elimination so far. Who won it? I'll tell you who won it. Cyril Musulmani. He won it, and he's in this next heat, so uh, all eyes will be on him. Can he qualify through this round? There's no gimmies in this. Albo's look good in this second elimination. He's won both of his heats so far. Who else have we had win heats? Pretty sure yakino has been looking pretty good this uh, elimination. For some reason I can't get this to... Um, just sorry why I'm talking to myself here. We're into the last minute before heat number 12, which will be the last quarter final. So we've had... We have Albo win his tees. We've had... Kintal looks pretty good. Men and Gatti. He's uh, won both of his heats as well. Um, God, for some that reason I'm not, not updated, but I think Yakino as well. Okay, there we go. I've stopped talking to myself. <laughs> yeah, Yakino won both his heats as well. There we go. Got there in the end. God, that took a while. Uh, okay, Marotti, Asmussen, Volwater, Franz, Cyril Musulmani, Kusin and Farin are lining up. They're flying towards the start right now as we speak. Oh, God, this looks early. Whoa, right on the line. H24, so Peter Volwater, the best start down the bottom end. And he's actually sailed over Franz, it looked like. So Franz got rolled, and that's going to hurt Tati Franz. But we've seen him come back. Marotti is flying in the middle of the picture, the young Croatian. And he is a big lad. We've got Asmussen at the top end. These boys are drag racing full speed towards this first mark. How is it going to end up? Marotti, look at him go. Uh, but look at Asmussen go. He's going to have the outside line, though. But it's Asmussen that's cutting down straight in round first. So Asmussen round first, Marotti second place. Then there's Peter Volwart, then there's a bit of parking up. Farin putting the sail on Tati Franz. Just struggling to get out the jive mark. He didn't need that, Tati, if he needs to get back in this. But the first guys are not far from the back guys. But Asmussen is flying out in the lead. You, it's going to take a miracle for Gunnar Asmussen not to qualify in this. But Tati Franz dropping out the back at the moment. If you look at the red sail, I think from Cyril Musumani, he is the fourth place rider. So the fourth place rider, Cyril Musumani, and he's being challenged all the time by Furin on the challenger sail. And he looks like he's actually just rolled him. So we'll see how much he's rolled him coming into this mark. If Farin can actually get down in front of him, that will be a pass. Oh, I'll tell you what. Asmussen was going for the wrong mark. That's the problem with being so far in the lead. Oh, and he's caused a hell of a pile-up. And Asmussen's in the water. So I think what happened is he went for the wrong mark, had to change his direction at the end, uh, and that has caused him. I said he should get a disaster to not qualify for the next round, and that's exactly what happens. And guess who's up into fourth place? Yes, you guessed it. Tati France. So Tati France from near disaster is back in a qualifying position. And Gunnar Asmussen, who was miles in the lead, has dropped back into the pack into fifth place. Marotti back in the pack into sixth place. So it's all changed around. And Peter Volwater is in fact leading this. I say he's leading this. He's not. Farin, 
I think he's leading this now. Volwater in second, Cyril Musumani in third, then Gunnar Asmussen overtook and taken Tati Franz, and here comes Marotti. This is super close. We've got the loft sail from Kusin, who's in the water. So this is super close racing. Uh, and Asmussen has dropped right back now. He couldn't get going in that gust. Tati Franz has got back up into fourth place. Marotti back into fifth. Positions changing the whole time. Uh, and here comes Marotti making a challenge on Tati Franz. Obviously, Marotti on the black sail from point seven, challenging the little Maui sails of Tati Franz. So, round in first place, it is Farin, then Peter Volwater, then Cyril Musumani. Here comes Tati Franz, a good jibe from Tati Franz, and he's pumped underneath Cyril Musumani. And Cyril Musumani has got a bit of a challenge for Marotti on the black sail. It's going to be a drag race. So, Cyril Musumani clinging onto fourth place. He's picked up a nice gust, though, and he's going to push. Uh, for that fourth place, he looks quite comfortable now, but I bet you his heart was in his mouth then. He's done. He won that first elimination, and he wouldn't have wanted to go out at the quarterfinal stage. So it's Farin maybe causing a bit of an upset here, qualifying in first place. I think it's Farin. Uh, second place is Peter Volwater. Then Tati Franz in third. Cyril Musumani fourth. Marotti missing out. Gunnar Asmussen missing out. Must be gutted. Absolutely costly mistake from Gunnar Asmussen sailing the wrong course. Gutted, gutted for Gunnar Asmussen there. He was looking really good, lots of speed, and just, I think, him leading by such a way, he actually caused him to go the wrong way. He did just make that mark. I think he had to head up a lot, but he was very close to not making it. So next on the water, we've got the first semi-final. Albo, Cordell, Kentel, Maynard, Menengatti, Tosselli, Kestel, Angulo. How does that sound? That is stacked. They're all stacked. I'm going to stop saying that. Oh, I don't know if someone can bring me some water. I've got one. But we've run out of water here. Oh, there's a few guys over there, surely. F99 over early. But you all know who F99 is, I'm guessing. It's someone who didn't really want to go out there. <laughs> I can tell you that. <laughs> F99. Hmm. Um... It's Castell, surely. I'm looking for him just to make sure. <laughs> I can't find him. I'm sure it's Anton Castell, but I can't find him. I'm just going to go with... Oh, there he is. Yeah, F99. Yeah, that is correct. So it is Anton Castell over early. This is not his competition at the moment. He's out in the first round in the first one. He's out at the quarterfinal stage. No, he's not. He's at the semi-final stage. Ah, so he will go into the semi-final. So he can still get a ninth. If he was to win the loser's final, he would get a ninth. But he is in the loser's final. He's not even given himself a chance at the final. So that will be upsetting for Anton Kestel. He came into this competition seventh overall for the year. So uh, at the moment, he's going to be dropping down. He's not... You know, he could even lose his top 10 status if he doesn't get his act together. So he really needs to turn it on in that semi-final. He's been looking good today, uh, but it's not going to help him. So Menengatti, who's your money on? Okay, we've got Jonathan French saying, Ben, other than lasers, how much do those on-the-water camera streaming systems cost like they use at the Pipe Masters? Well, I'm not sure. It's, it's a lot to do with everything. It's the actual system, I think. We did have one in Denmark, which the guys, I think, made themselves. So I'm not sure how much it is if they make it themselves. Uh, but you also got to have a cameraman, obviously, in the water as well, which is another manpower. Um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know exact costs. I just know it costs more than it does at the moment. And that's probably the problem. If we could get more money, I don't think that would be a problem. But it comes down to money. Uh, we've got Canute uh, saying, do slalom sailors still use adjustable outall trims to sails? 
Yes, they definitely do. They don't really use downhaul, downhaul set, but they definitely use out all. It's kind of compul not compulsory, but they wouldn't want to do without it. Uh, it's a very big disadvantage not to have it. So, yeah, there we go. That's a very rubbish answer, but Tati Franz, I think, uh, is turning it on today. He's, he's, he's making rounds. He's not made it as easy as yesterday. Yesterday, he was killing it. He probably could have done what he did with his eyes shut, whereas today, he's really having to work for his money. So, we'll have to wait and see how he gets on. Can he make the final? What's your money on? Can Tati Franz... Uh, like I say, better known for his freestyle, can he make the final? Like I say, he's not had it all his own way at the moment, so it would be interesting to see. We've already had Dunkerbeck go out in the first round, which wasn't a, obviously it wasn't a very good result for Bjorn Dunkerbeck. So we have had some big upsets. Who's your money on for this? Who's your money on for making it through this round? You've got uh, Albo, Cordell, Cantel. Maynard, Menengatti, Tosselli, and Angulo. Kestel obviously, obviously being uh, PMS, so he won't be taking any further parts. So we've got seven riders in this. Um, it's going to be interesting. Menengatti's been going well today. Albo's been going well today. Uh, can these guys make it into the final? Menengatti obviously will have a little look at Kentel, and it's making it difficult because they've got mm. Albo. Kentel and Menengatti, all top three in the world, all in this same semi-final heat. So that will be the difference. Okay, so here they go. They're lining up. That's why the guys are pushing. It's a pretty solid semi-final heat. CV1 and KV11, so Finian Maynard and Josh Angulo with the best starts. They'll be up this top end as they come past us. The guys at the top end will look like they increase the speed, obviously, because the angle changes. Uh, and as I say that, it's not like that, is it? <laughs> it looks like uh, the 0.7 sales are actually increasing. So it does look to have uh, the Poodle, maybe, and uh, Antoine Albo are looking like they're good. I think it's Menengatti. It looks like Josh Angulo as well, so I think... It's, uh, I mean, Antoine Albo ran in first. Kentel second. Josh Angulo, oh, and that's, I think, Toselli has gone down. Hopefully it's Toselli. Menengatti fans, they're hoping it's Toselli. I think it's Menengatti that's still up. We've got uh, the other Gastro rider, or the Gastro rider, Cordell. Uh, and he's looking in fifth place, but he's got a very good chance of maybe catching fourth place. Any mistakes, there's a big gap between him and the last time, but it's the two pride guys, two pride in RID, the poodle, Julian Cantel, and Antoine Albo. Okay, so it's Antoine Albo rounding first. Second place, the poodle, Julian Cantel. Then we've got Josh Angulo. Then we've got Menengatti. Then we've got Cordell. Oh, and Cordell's gone down. So it is going to be very tricky for the other boys to catch up now. The top four guys are going to get away. It does look like Antoine Albo's got this in the bag. Okay, so Antoine Albo, Julian Cantel. Josh Angulo, these top three looking very solid at the moment. And we're thinking this is uh, Alberto Menengatti. So it's looking good. Sebastian Cor uh, Cordell, or Cordell, is, uh, he's got a lot of work to do. Good job from him. Finian Maynard just coming through now. But I think this top four is pretty much guaranteed. Okay, so there we go. Antoine Albo, round in first. Julian Cantal, he looks super consistent. No wonder he's second place in the world. Josh Angulo in third place. So Josh looking good as well. Good jibe from him. And then I think we've got Alberto Menengatti in fourth place. He's still got Cordell behind him. 
So he can't afford to do a bad jibe, and that's not a great jibe. And Cordell with a really good jibe. Here we go. This is on. Let's get back to that. Cordell, look at Cordell go. He's going to give Alberto Menengatti a real good run down this last reach. What a good jibe from Cordell. Really trying to go underneath him, but I don't know if he's going to go underneath Menengatti. He did have a good jibe. Probably just needed a couple of metres to come out the other side. And he might, oh, he's giving it all he's got. He's doing a slight wheelie. I'd written Cordell off, but he is really pushing it. Look at the board. It's hardly in the water. I think he's give up the chase now, and it's Menengatti. He's going to take that fourth spot. So Menengatti in fourth, Josh Angulo third, Julian uh, Kintel in second place, and Antoine Albo in first place. That's the way the top four, uh, they're the top four that will go into the final of Elimination 2. So... Really good race in here, like I said, on the, the fourth day, I suppose, of Silt, or third day. We've lost track totally what day it is now. Fourth day we're going to go with. we count registration day. And this is the second elimination in the slalom, obviously. Yakino, Allen, Buzainis, Diaz, they will all be in it. And then the, they obviously qualified from that third quarter final. Obviously, we're also going to have Farin, who won his, he was looking good. Volwater, Tati Franz and Cyril Musamani. Those guys are lining up right now. Top four will make it into the final of the second elimination. Uh, and the bottom four will go into the losers. Three, two, one. Wow, it's a really good start down the pin end. AUS zero. So it uh, sounds like uh, Steve Allen with a good start. I'm sure it's Buzainis as well somewhere in there. We've got Farin as well, I would imagine. Farin's on the white side. He's getting challenged at the moment. Okay, so who's that round in first? <laughs> it's Steve Allen, I think, followed by Farin, followed by Cyril Musulmani. Uh, Tati Franz is there, Buzainis is there, yep, yeah, Buzainis and Tati Franz are there. Then we have the Avanti sale of uh, Peter Volwater, just bringing up the rear, we've got the north sale of Jimmy Diaz, we got Yakino, sorry, sorry, Yakino in second place, I'm not being funny to Farin, but I thought that might be different, so it's uh, Yakino, I think, up in second place, he's been looking good today, I would have tipped him to make the final. Uh, and I'm going to tip him again. <laughs> a bit easier now when he's in second place. So it does look to where Steve Allen, uh, Yakino, Cyril Musulmani. Not sure in which order, but I think that is pretty much where we're lying at the moment. I'm going Steve Allen, Yakino, Cyril Musulmani, and then I think we've got. Oh, difficult to see at the moment. It's quite blurry. We've got Buzainis and Tati Franz fighting it out, and I think it's Tati Franz. Oh, it really has dropped there. Struggling to get going, they're not moving. Is this going to... They've got nine knots apparently on the boat, so they're just saying they're on too small a gear. So it's, it's not a possibility of cancelling this because they have nine knots. Unless they get a lower wind reading between now and the end of the race, this race will count. So Steve Allen, Yakino, followed by Cyril Musulmani. And then we've got the two Maui sales, and this is Tati Franz versus Mikey Buzainis. Here we go. We've seen this fight in Aruba, and it was Tati Franz that came out on top. But how's that? El Presidente Jimmy Diaz, like I said, voted one of the best jibers in the business. Just did one of the best jibes in the business. Came inside and has just basically took out Micah Buzainis. Just stole his wind. And now it's a drag race between him and Tali Franz to see who qualifies for the men's final. Of this second elimination here on day four in Silt for the GP Jewel. Windsurfing World Cup at the moment, it's advantage Tati Franz, but we know Jimmy Diaz can jibe, but we know Tati Franz can jibe. Who is going to get the better? Here we go. Tati Franz coming in. Needs a good jibe. Does a good jibe. Jimmy Diaz got a little bit of a run on him. Jimmy Diaz is coming through strong. Tati Franz pumping for his life. He needs to hold off Jimmy Diaz, trying to get a bit of height. He needs Jimmy to go below him. 
if there's any sort of gap, there we go. Tali Franz accelerating away from Jimmy Diaz, and we might see another final for Tati Franz. He'll be right up there in the overall if he makes another final. He's looking pretty solid. So we've got Steve Allen in the final. We've got Cyril Musulmani in the final. We've got Yakino in the final. And I tell you what, we've now got Tati Franz in that final. Few of the guys may be taking smaller gear, and that's why they're saying they have nine knots on the boat and the guys just can't go. But I, I can't see how you can cancel that race. It looked a very fair race. Yes, there's gusts. Yes, there's lulls. But it didn't look unfair. It just looked like it uh, made it exciting. What do you think? Do you think that was a fair race? I think that was pretty fair to watch here on the live stream, and it's usually quite a good indicator of how fair it is. So there we go, we have our finalists, and I'm told we're going into the winner's final. I don't want to ask anymore, I get shouted at, but it does change every day. Usually they do winner's final first, just to guarantee the result. Um, that's what we did earlier, but I'm going to have to get on the radio, so <laughs> I'm scared. Here we go. I'm taking it's the same as before, winner's final first. Winner's final first. Yeah, okay. So winner's final is first. Phew. <laughs> uh, and loser's final will be next, obviously. So uh, we're straight up with the men's winner's final. Just refreshing my browser to see we get the, uh, the names that were in it. We can probably obviously work it out. We just uh, read them out. We know Albo's in there. We know Kintel's in there. We know Angulo's in there. We know Tosselli. Uh, no, that can't be right. Oh, maybe, I, maybe, maybe, hang on, hang on, okay, so we got, uh, it says, I was told Menengati was in that uh, qualifying position, but on the results I've got here, it was Tesselli that made it through, so it wasn't Menengati, there we go, this just shows my information, is uh, nick so good, as they say over here in Silt. So it is Tosselli, so that's quite a big upset. Um, yeah, so Menegatti is in the loser's final. So Albo, Cantel, Angulo, Tosselli, Allen, Yakino, Cyril Musulmani, Franz. That's the winner's final. Uh, bad news for Men Menegatti. Uh, he needed to win this competition. Antoine Albo finished eighth at the moment. That isn't happening. He's got other things on his mind now. He needs uh, to challenge Julian Cantel. Julian Cantel sitting in second place overall, looking very solid at this competition. Uh, and at the moment, it's advantage Julian Cantel. I think Menengatti needs to finish no more than two places behind Julian Cantel and be in the top eight if he wants to take second place overall. If he's any more than two places behind or outside the top eight, it's over. Okay, so they're just having a bit of a chat on the boat at the moment, just trying to work out uh, what's going on. But it does sound like we called it before. The winner's final first. They're just sorting out a few results. So it is going a bit patchy. It did this last night. There is wind out there, but maybe the guys have to come in and get bigger sails if they're in this final. And they do have to give them a bit of a time to do that, if that is the case. If it has dropped significantly and people need to change gear, they will need to give them a bit more time. Um, there's plenty of breeze out there. We, there have got, you know, there's freestylers out there doing freestyle stuff. So there is breeze, but it's very patchy. You can see a couple of freestylers in the background quite far out to sea and like I say they're on no bigger than five O's I wouldn't have thought you know some probably on four or fives wouldn't surprise me <laughs> see Estamos one of the gas viendo, boys just eh, flipping around one of the moves el, there la realización de la, de la eliminación de los par primeros participantes para la clasificación de ganadores y perdedores que va a una final de para ganadores y perdedores well, y la clasificación viene siendo de 
de la siguiente manera que eh, según van haciendo las pruebas el último o el descalificado se van eliminando y van pasando a las clasificaciones inferiores es decir eh, hay una clasificación final de ganadores y una clasificación de perdedores también final entonces los perdedores van pasando de cada prueba que se realiza se van pasando a los perdedores y los ganadores van pasando a la lista de perdedores Estamos desde Alemania retransmitiendo esta final de slalom en el que está con un viento aproximadamente de 15-20 nudos y bueno, están participando con una vela bastante grande eh, la pueden aguantar y según eh, se van eliminando según los regatistas se van eliminando según van haciendo las pruebas venimos haciendo transmitiendo esto desde las aproximadamente desde las 4 de la tarde que donde mientras no pudimos mientras no hubo emisión porque no hubo viento y ahora pues bueno se están haciendo todas las eliminatorias entonces vamos a hacer ahora, eh, ahora mismo para hacer la, la eliminatoria de la segunda final como ven ahí Estamos a la espera de que nos hagan la siguiente salida, la siguiente eliminatoria. Okay, so they're just a bit. Of okay, so there's guys out there asking what size sail they're on because they're trying to work it out. When guys are not playing in, they cannot call a race off like they've done in the past. That's what they're trying to cut out. When guys have took too small a sail or got the call wrong, if they're not playing in and they have bigger sails in their quiver, then it's kind of their own fault. They should be on bigger sails and they can't stop the race for that. And I think that's a good decision. Um, so there's. But the only problem is there's a couple of guys asked to go in and change uh, before this race if they could go and get bigger cells and they've told them no you can't so uh, they will be on the same size cells that they've been using i think it's kind of harsh if you want to go change cells that is a problem um well we'll see 30 seconds until the start. There's definitely no time now. We're going to go straight to the men's winners' final. Albo, Cantel, Angulo, Toselli, Allen, Yakino, Cyril Musumani, and Franz. Elimination two. Like I said, Albo could take control here. Uh, Cyril Musumani could take control. He's obviously won that first one. He needs another good result. He needs to be ahead of Antoine Albo. Está preparado para salida. Dos, uno, salida. Okay, it's a good start. Buena salida, sí. CV1 with a good start. And Toint Tosselli, so Tosselli and CV1. So Tosselli looking really good. He was looking good in the last one, but he is getting away from the pack at the moment. This is shaping up to be a very good final. But here comes Tati France, the little man from Bonaire. He's absolutely powering down this first reach. We know he can jibe as well. He's right at the back of Josh Angulo, so it's going to be interesting to see how it affects his jibe. But it's Tosselli rounding first, Josh Angulo second, followed by Tati Franz, followed by Yakino on the inside. Good jibe from Yakino. Tati Franz getting away pretty quickly. I think it's Julian Cantel and Al Bo has slipped back, I think. Looking at the size of his sails, I'm going to guess that's Al Bo. Um, but at the moment, it's Tosselli looking good out in the front. Josh Angulo looking good in second. So these two looking very solid. I think it's Julian Cantel in third place. We've got Tati Franz down low in fourth. Then we've got Yakino. Then I think we've got Al Bo. 
Cyril Musulmani and Steve Allen on the Severns bringing up the rear. So not good news for Cyril Musulmani. The good news is he's in the final, so that's not bad. But Toselli's looking good. Josh Angulo, good jibe from him. A good jibe from Tati Franz in third place. Fourth place, uh, it's the Poodle. Slipping to fourth, Julian Kinsell. Then Yakino in fifth. And then uh, Antoine Albo in sixth. I think we've got Cyril Musumani in seventh. And, and uh, Steve Allen in eighth place. Y va Toselli primero, looking good uh, at the front. Angulo but he's not just, really pulling away from Josh Angulo. Angulo. So Josh Angulo still in this. But uh, yeah, Julian Kinsell just reels Angulo. in Tati Franz. Uh, just looking on that reach, he looked like he'd lost his third place, and he has. So Julian Cantel up into third, and uh, Josh Angulo challenging Toselli for first. Y and it Josh Angulo does a Se good job. Josh Angulo in pumping. first, followed by Toselli, followed by Julian Cantel, followed by Tati Franz, followed by Yakino. Then we've got Antoine Albo struggling to get out the jibes. We've got Cyril Musumani and Steve Allen. Uh, at the back of the pack at the moment, but it's Josh Angulo pulling out a good lead at now. Toselli slipped back a bit, and Julian Cantel really challenged him, and he's going to put a lot of pressure on him coming into this last jibe mark. So, uh, Josh Angulo, can he hold it? Can he get his first win? Uh, here in Silt, Josh Angulo round needs a nice safe jibe, but he can't be too safe. Is that too safe? Maybe. Toselli just trying to keep the inside line and parks it up. Tati with a chance, but here comes Yakino. Yakino moving up into fourth place. A good jibe from him. Tati Fran slipping back a little bit, and he's going to sit underneath those sails all the way down this reach. But it's Josh Angulo that's going to win this. Julian Cantal has raced this one to perfection. He didn't have the best running, but he is in second place now. So a solid result for Julian Cantal. Then Toselli, then Yakino, then Tati Franz, then Antoine Albo. Um, that's how it's looking at the moment. Josh Angulo wins it. Good result for Josh. Second place, Julian Cantal, then Toselli, then Yakino, then Tati Franz, I think, then uh, Antoine Albo. Then it's going to be Cyril Musumani and Steve Allen. Good final, good final result there from the boys. Bonita regata, bonita prueba que hemos visto, con fantástico So solid, viento. solid results. Not the best y result for Cyril Musumani. Like I said, he was in the final, so not all bad news. Estamos viendo la la, eh, la salida right anterior, que salió justo part, detrás de la but, uh, de la primera que vimos. Vamos a ver la imagen. Not so good in that first round. Vamos un barco so penalizándose. Into the losers final: Cordell, Maynard, Menengati, Castell, Diaz, Farin, Buzainis, Volwater. Okay. We're into the last minute for this losers final elimination two. I have a feeling this will be the last elimination sale today. So this could be the last heat of the day. Who's your money on? Can Menengati get himself a ninth place? He's going to need to. Can Castell? He's going to need to. These boys are going to be losing big places overall unless they put in some good results in this losers final. Just because it's a losers final uh, doesn't mean it's not important. This can be a counting result. Here we go. They're pretty early. No. Oof, good start. Looks like Menegatti down that bottom end had a good start, but he wasn't going at full speed. So. Okay, so Menengatti, they can't Estamos viendo la, la salida de los, de, lo, de la, digamos que de las, la final. He's been going well today, really uh, good to watch. Uh, Buzainis maybe as well. La final well, de, the, bueno, ellos le llaman la final de los perdedores. Where is he? Yeah, he's up there as well. La final de consolación. We've got uh, a couple of the Avanti sales. We've got Maynard and we've got Volwater. En realidad todos los perdedores de todas las pruebas se van haciendo como un poco But Buzainis has really pulled away from the pack. That's good. If you can get nice clear air and get that first jibe away and you get rid of that pack, that is when you can really eke out some distance from the main guys. So it's Buzainis who's flying down this second reach and looking in control at the moment. But we can't write anyone off at the moment. Cordell, like I said, he's been going well this competition. Young German rider. So he's rounding second. Good jibe from him. Third place, Castell up into third, then Menengatti on the point seven, then Jimmy Diaz, then we got the two Avanti sales, Finney and Maynard and uh, Peter Volwater. And then we have Furin 
on the uh, Challenger sale, the white Challenger sale. So the Avanti's having a bit of a battle there, but it, at the front, it's Mike Abuzainis leading this loser's final in the second in the anterior, hemos visto como José Angulo primero, segundo fue Kentel, tercero nice Toselin, Toselin, cuarto eh, Tachino, quinto Franz, séptimo Allen y octavo eh, Musulman. Y ahora estamos viendo la, la, la final de consolación. Said, looks en la que like va he's in control of this loser's final. This will be a ninth nice place for him, so not Javi a bad Diaz result. Primero. So Buzainis rounding first, cleanly away. Cordell, a really good result for Cordell, a tenth place. So he's looking nice. Third place, Castelli, eleventh for Castelli. him. Primero va Castelli. For, uh, for Menengati. And we've got thirteenth for Diaz. Fourteenth and fifteenth is Volwater and uh, Finian Maynard, but I tell you what, Farin's tried to go inside, oh. needed to try something, but he's gone down, so it will be the advantage. Es, es complicado the verlo desde aquí porque uh, well, las imágenes son. Es Mike Abuzainis que wins it, a good result de, for him, ninth place. Uh, the best he could have done in the losers' sitio. final. Then Cordell, a really good result for him, tenth, eleventh is Kestel, twelfth Menengati. He probably won't be as happy with that. Nos dan, nos dan la clasificación de, de los todos los, perde, los perdedores. Okay, then we've got Jimmy Diaz. And we've got the Avantes coming across the line. So, good result from Mike Abuzainis. We've got someone kicking out some tunes in here. I'm not sure what's happening. Tenemos, bueno, una penalización, ¿no? Sorry, we just got, just got all laptops going off in here. So, that's where we go. Are we going into another elimination? I'm not so sure. Is that it for the day? Oh, right, okay. We're going to keep going. I'm um, Take it back. We're going to try and do the first eight heats, I've been told. So it's not over just yet. Don't you worry. Don't go away. We're still going. We're still going. How does that leave the overall results? Well... Six. Bueno, tenemos la clasificación. El primero, eh, Busianic. El segundo, Cordel eh, Maynar. 6.25 for the red flag of Kestel, so we have cuarto Nenegati. Quinto, Diaz. Sexto. Volwater eh, y séptimo Nainar. So we will be starting very soon. Uh, elimination three starting yet. Six twenty five. A ver, tercera prueba. A las seis y veinticinco. So give me like fifteen minutes and I'll be back uh, to tell you what's going down. And we'll see you then. Con lo cual, bueno, vamos a descansar un ratito y hasta las 6 y 25 no volvemos a, a, a darles un poco aquí las charlas estas. Venga, hasta luego. Yakino on the inside, good job from Yakino. Tati Franz getting away pretty quickly. I think it's Julian Cantel and Al Bo has slipped back, I think. Looking at the size of the sails, I'm going to guess that's Al Bo. Um, but at the moment, it's Toselli looking good out in the front. Josh Angulo looking good in second. So these two looking very solid. I think it's Julian Cantel in third place. We've got Tati Franz down low in fourth. Then we've got Yakino. Then I think we've got Al Bo. Cyril Musulmani and Steve Allen on the Severns bringing up the rear, so not good news for Cyril Musulmani. The good news is he's in the final, so that's not bad. 
but Toselli's looking good. Josh Angulo, good jibe from him. A good jibe from Tati Franz in third place. Fourth place, uh, it's the Poodle. Slip into fourth, Julian Kinsel. Then Yakino in fifth. And then uh, Antoine Albo in sixth. I think we've got Cyril Mussamani in seventh and uh, Steve Allen in eighth place. But Toselli looking good out the front, but he's not really pulling away from Josh Angulo. So Josh Angulo still in this. But uh, Julian Cantel has just reeled in Tati Franz. Uh, just looking on that reach, he looked like he'd lost his third place, and he has. So Julian Cantel up into third. And uh, Josh Angulo challenging Toselli for first. And it is Josh Angulo. Does a good job. Josh Angulo in first. Followed by Toselli. Followed by Julian Cantel. Followed by Tati Franz. Followed by Yakino. Then we've got Antoine Albo struggling to get out the jibes. We've got Cyril Musulmani and Steve Allen. Uh, at the back of the pack at the moment. But it's Josh Angulo pulling out a good lead at now. Toselli slipped back a bit and Julian Cantel really challenged him. And he's going to put a lot of pressure on him coming into this last jibe mark. So uh, Josh Angulo, can he hold it? Can he get his first win? Uh, here in Silt, Josh Angulo round needs a nice safe jibe, but he can't be too safe. Is that too safe? Maybe. Toselli just trying to keep the inside line and parks it up. Tati with a chance, but here comes Yakino. Yakino moving up into fourth place. A good jibe from him. Tati Franz slipping back a little bit, and he's going to sit underneath those sails all the way down this reach. But it's Josh Angulo that's going to win this. Julian Cantal has raced this one to perfection. He didn't have the best run in, but he is in second place now. So a solid revolt, the result for Julian Cantal. Then Toselli, then Yakino, then Tati Franz, then Antoine Albo. Um, that's how it's looking at the moment. Josh Angulo wins it. Good result for Josh Angulo. Primero, second place, Julian Aquino, Cantal, segundo, then Toselli, then tercero. Yakino, then Tati Franz, I think, then uh, Antoine Albo. Then it's going to be Cyril Musumani and Steve Allen. Good final, good final result there from the boys. So solid, solid results. Not the best result for Cyril Musumani. Like I said, he was in the final, so not all bad news. Um, it'll still be right up there overall. Not great for Al Bo, but uh, a better result for Julian Cantel who come through. And obviously Josh Angulo wins it, but not so good in that first round. So we're going straight into the losers' final. Cordell, Maynard, Menengati, Castel, Diaz, Farin, Buzainis, Volwater. We're into the last minute for this losers' final. Elimination two. I have a feeling this will be the last elimination sale today. So this could be the last heat of the day. Who's your money on? Can Menegatti get himself a ninth place? He's going to need to. Can Castell? He's going to need to. These boys are going to be losing big places overall unless they put in some good results in this losers final. Just because it's a losers final uh, doesn't mean it's not important. This can be a counting result. Here we go. They're pretty early. Va la segunda eliminación de los de, de las eh, digamos de los perdedores. Looks like Consolación. Down that bottom end, a good start, but he wasn't going at full speed. So aquí en la consola. Okay, so Menengati, they can't really sell them, but he's just first across the line. We've got Cordell in this on the Gastra. He's been going well today. Really uh, good to watch. Uh, Buzainis maybe as well on the Acordil, Maui sails. Uh, Maynard, Where is he? Uh, yeah, he's up Menegati, there as well. Then we've got the north of Jimmy Diaz. Ferin, we've got uh, a couple of the Avanti Volwater. sails. We've got Maynard and we've got Volwater. But rounding first, it is Buzainis followed by Cordell. Followed by Jimmy Diaz. Followed by Menengati. Is a bit of a park up at the mark. It's not going to help the Jimmy big guys. Jimmy Diaz, ahí se todos. Yeah, en la salida no han salido. Están un poco atascados. Of, uh, y están uh, yeah, todos Castell, abanicando. Well para poder coger line. salir y velocidad. Bueno. Y ya cogemos really aquí un grupito bastante destacado. Si puedes conseguir una buena clara aire y conseguir esa primera jive de la primera, y conseguir rid de ese pack, eso es cuando puedes realmente eke out some distance from the main guys. So it's Buzainis who's flying down this second reach and looking in mm -hmm. control at the moment. But we can't write anyone off at the moment. Cordell, like I said, he's been going well this competition. Young German guy. Cordell, rider. primero, so segundo, he's second, second, good Diaz. Diaz from him. Third place, Castell up into tercero, third. Tercero then Castell. Menengati on the point seven. Then Jimmy Diaz. Then we got the two Avanti sales, Finney and Maynard and uh, Peter Volwater. And then we have Furin on the uh, challenger cell, the white challenger cell. So the Avanti's having a bit of a battle there. But it, at the front, it's Micah Buzainis leading this. 
Losers final in the second elimination. Looking very solid. Estamos viendo la segunda eliminación. There he goes, jibing on the outside, eh, jibing on. Clasificación de consolación. Nice jibe from Buzainis. Cordell, he's been jibing well today. Second place for him. Then Castell, he's going to need to try and catch Cordell. Every place counts for him. He's seventh place overall, as does this man. This is Menengatti. Then we've got Diaz. Then we've got Finney and Maynard, Peter Volwater and Furin battling it out. And it looks Furin. like uh, maybe Maynard going underneath or Volwater going también. underneath there. Estamos viendo la eliminación del slalom. Del slalom. This loser's final. This will be a ninth place for him, so not a bad result. Y bueno, para primero Cordell. This round in first, clean your way. Cordell, a really good result for Cordell, a tenth place. So he's looking nice. Third place, Castell, eleventh. It would be for him. Twelfth for Castell sigue tercero. And Gatti. And we got thirteenth for Diaz. Fourteenth and fifteenth is Volwater. Cuarto, quinto. Finian Maynard, but I tell you what, Finian tried to go inside, needed to try something, but he's gone down, so it will be the Avanti Sales that take the final two spots. Uh, well, for him, we'll take the final spot. But it's Mike Abuzainis that wins it, a good result for him, ninth place. Uh, the best he could have do in the losers' final. Then Cordell, a really good result for him. Cordell gana esta prueba. Tenth is Castell, twelfth men and Gatti. He probably won't be as happy with Castell, that. Castell, segundo. Cordell, Castell. Okay, then we got Jimmy Diaz. And we got the Avantes coming across the line. So, good result from Mike Abuzainis. We've got someone kicking out some tunes in here. I'm not sure what's happening. <laughs> Sorry, we just got, just got all laptops going off in here. So, that's where we go. Are we going into another elimination? I'm not so sure. Is that it for the day? All oh, right, okay. We're going to keep going. I'm take it back. We're going to try and do the first eight heats, I'm been told. So it's not over just yet. Don't you worry. Don't go away. We're still going. We're still going. How does that leave the overall results? Well, six. Y así quedan en la entrada. Eh, sería eh, Bustin primero, segundo eh, Cordel, tercero Castel, Castel, cuarto Megati, Menegati, quinto Díaz, sexto Bob Walter. Elimination three starting yet, 6.25. So you've got about 25 minutes. Go get yourself a cup of tea, depending what time it is. Maybe crack open a beer. Uh, put the kettle on. Do what Vamos a ver la do, eh, eliminación de la tercera pounds. prueba. So a poner aquí like las 18.25, pero son ya las 18.38. Uh, we'll see you then.